What's going on, guys? Wade with Wade's Ventures. We are now live. Uh, every single show, guys, it's the same, same thing, same intro. Hopefully, you guys aren't getting What's going oh, on, guys? Let me, uh, <laughs> rookie. That's two days in a row. That's two days in a row. What's going on, guys? Rookie. All right, Sue, welcome in from London, England. Wow, that is incredible. Rebecca the fourth, you are in. Yes, it is a, it's, uh, so guys, tonight we have an amazing show. I'm going to shout out some of you guys in a second. But we've got to be kind of quick because there's a lot of stuff we're going to jam back in today's show. What's going on, Pac-Man? The most amazing admin in the business. Deb, what's going on? I think I just saw you at Casey's live show. I could be wrong. Let me know if I am. Uh, Nelson, April, T and A, Treasure, Sarah. Man, now you guys are piling in here. Hello, what's going on? Wow. Bruce, what's going on? A perfect buy. The Frenchie, what is going on, Frenchie? Gate City Picker, what's going on? One of my favorite names, by the way. The Rockstar is in the house. The Rockstar is in the house. I am here, yes. <coughs> Guys, go check out his last shipping video that he did. The video he did literally, I think, what, 10, 15 minutes ago, talked about shipping rates, really important stuff. Real Talk Mentor. Man, this guy supports all the reselling community, and I appreciate you. Russ the Raccoon, $2. I appreciate it, my man. We got to get you on. I know you said you're going to get a mic. Love to have you on. I know you do a lot of what Liquidation Pros, our amazing guest, does. So, all right, guys. So, let's get let's go ahead and get into this. You guys know all of this week has been a first on the Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. Um, we've never had shows every single day for a full week. In fact, more than a full week because we had a show Sunday. So we're jam-packed this week. Um, we've got another really cool guest tomorrow. The next two days is going to be a lot about liquidation, bulk buying, wholesale, um, because our guest tonight does a lot of that, and our guest tomorrow does a lot of that. So hopefully you guys can get some nuggets and get some good information. I've got my eBay Open 2018 shirt on, guys. So we're going to represent, hopefully you guys are in it to win it this year, and you go to eBay Open 2019. Treasure guy, what's going on? Love your content. Go check out my first storage unit adventure. What is your, I'm assuming your YouTube channel is um, the treasure guy, right? Mm -hmm. Let me know. You can put it in chat. Um, before we go any further, if you guys are new to the channel, every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and sometimes Thursdays, we invite amazing people in our community. And these are people that aren't necessarily YouTube or Insta famous yet. Although we do invite some of those people like we had last night. Um, but uh, the point here, guys, is to showcase really cool people around our community <laughs> that are making money online. And um, so that's what we're going to do tonight. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to my man who also supports this channel, Liquidation Pros. My man, go ahead. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for uh, having me on, Wade. I really appreciate it. Um, looking forward to talking to you, giving you some insight on what it is that I do. Um, had a really good year last year. I'm um, looking to do the same this upcoming year while I grow YouTube and Instagram channels. So spreading the love back. Um, I'm self-taught. I never took a course or anything like that. Most of the information I've learned is either through YouTube or, I mean, back in the day, they had the eBay for Dummies books. I don't know if anybody remembers those, but it's uh, it's been a long journey. Um, I opened my first eBay account in 99, and then I sold my first item in 2002. So I was a uh, a senior in high school when eBay was like really starting to take off. And um, back then I was actually buying a lot of stereo equipment because everybody was in their cars in high school and buying it on eBay and then selling it for cash to people at school and whatnot. So always been into uh, to selling stuff. And then um, from like 2004 to about 2008, I just did it as a hobby. Um, and then I started kind of slowly growing that I was doing auctions, um, all kinds of like local types of stuff and selling eBay just for beer money. Um, and then uh, I guess it was about when we had our second child, it was the business was growing and I found a local liquidation connection that was uh, hooking me up with pallets of Best Buy and Toys R Us returns. And I'm talking um, anywhere from 150 bucks to 225 bucks, just packed full of incredible inventory and from that day i was hooked on liquidation um since then that that guy's dried up he does he sells laptops overseas now uh like you know million dollar deals but um yeah i'm hoping uh hoping i can uh shed some light on what it is that i do and um i married i have four kids uh seven five 
two and a baby. So pretty, uh, pretty busy with the family. And uh, as you see in the uh, title, I am part-time. I still do have a full-time job. Um, I was a project manager for a while. Um, I stepped down to more of a data analyst type role, which is, uh, you know, at the office, but it was an hourly flexible job to where I could do four tens. Um, I have my Fridays and Saturdays to, to hustle. And then nights, I'm normally up till 10 or 11 o'clock at night, um, you know, working on the business. So four, four helpers now, four part-times, anywhere from um, five to 15 hours a week. So I, I want to ask you first and foremost, do you sleep? Oh yeah. I sleep seven, eight hours a night. <laughs> wow. Uh, it yeah. was, I, I was, um, uh, the, the main man who runs Amazon, I'm sure you know who he is. He, um, he said the key to his success was he gets a good night, eight hours at least per night of sleep. I thought that was interesting. Like yeah. that was like his key to success is getting sleep. Um, yeah, there's a really yeah. good book out right now, like a top seller about sleep and how important it is. Um, it, it can help with the anxiety and all these different medical conditions, your health. There's um, different chemicals that when you sleep, um, it like it takes care of hunger issues, all kinds of different stuff. So a lot of people are struggling, struggling with obesity. A lot of it's due to lack of sleep and anxiety. Um, but anyhow, I, I try to get in the bed by like 1030 or 11. And I, when I'm in, I'm the phone's off. You know, I'm not looking at my phone. I try to cut the screen time down. And by that point, I'm so beat. I'm just out. You know, it's been such a long day. Four so. kids. I don't know how you – okay, let me get this straight. So, first of all, tell me about how much you made last year. It doesn't need to be to the the, the T, but tell me how much you made. And uh, you are – you do have a job, so this is part-time even though you have employees. And you – on before the show, you did mention you're cleaning the fish tank. Like, I have no idea how you find time for that either. But uh, no wonder you're zen <laughs> over there, my man. You got, you got some <laughs> fish over there crushing it. Yeah, I gave it a quick uh, wipe down before the show started, and unfortunately made it cloudier, so it's harder to see them. But uh, these are African cichlids; they're like the easiest fish to keep. But you can also give them like the saltwater look. A lot of people have like, um, like this is Texas Holy Rock. It's limestone. It came out of Texas. This is coral from Hawaii. It was dead. It's dead coral that you can get. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. The kids love them. Um, I don't remember their names. The kids have names for them. Um, one of them speedy. I know that. And I think he's stripey. So pretty basic, pretty basic <laughs> names. So but, um, you did pretty good last year, huh? Yeah, last year was 93,000 on eBay and 120, 126, right around just under 126 on Amazon. So that doesn't count any of like bulk. Um, like my, I haven't gone through all my PayPal numbers yet for other transactions that were outside of eBay. But um, yeah, I mean, super pumped with that. The year before I was at 165 total. Um, the year before that I was at 90 and then 75 the year I started the business. So you can kind of see the growth as you expand and it went, the, the 90 was mainly just me. The end of that year, Q4 is when I hired my first helper and then it went from 90 to 165 and it's, it's all over from there once you have help, because it's more about, first of all, when you have help, you you have to work so much more because you have to prepare stuff for them. You know, when you're doing a one man show, it's like, oh, I'm going to take the night off and watch Netflix. Well, not if you have a helper down here working and they don't have nothing to do. So you're, you know, you're constantly uh, preparing for your help, um, taking care of, you know, timesheets, business stuff. It's always stuff to do. Well, guys, we have a jam packed show. I'm going to literally get as much information I can from this guy as possible. Um, before we do though, make sure that you guys subscribe to his YouTube channel. This is live. So <laughs> if you're watching this after recorded Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, but you more importantly go to his channel and to subscribe to it. I'm going to be putting it in chat, guys. I don't know if you'll be able to shout it out because he already has a good amount of following. But um, go subscribe to his channel. I, 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 it's really one of the, the hot, hot topics for me going into this year, which is Amazon. I want to do more Amazon. And so you want to align yourself with people that are already doing really good numbers and really good stuff with kind of whatever platform you're interested in. So we're going to get into this. If you guys have questions to put it in chat, put a few question marks in chat. And, um, and you know, again, I'm just going to sit back and let him answer it. Cause I mean, he did a, a good amount on eBay, Amazon, man, crushing it liquidation pros. All right. So first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about um, 2019 real quick, just two seconds. Like what are you planning on doing for 2019 to really amp up your business? Um, and then we'll go to the basics. 
So just towards the end of last year, I got the additional helper. So that, that brought it up to, it really ends up being equal to about um, one full-time employee or, you know, two employees that are working 20 to 30 hours a week. The, the combination of four, two of them in high school and two of them, two of them are in college. So um, that, that extra help is definitely going to help me for next year. I'm kind of restricted on, I run this out of my um, basement and then I have a storage house that I rent. So I'm kind of restricted to the output that I can do based on the size of my operation. But um, the biggest thing I can do to increase the sales would be trying to find higher, higher dollar average sale prices. So looking for more expensive stuff. Last year I got into high end, some high end cosmetics, perfumes, stuff like that. And then also um, high end watches like this uh, Seiko Echo Drive. I don't know if you guys can see that. Where's my camera at? I got you. I actually don't have you. I'm looking up here because I have another webcam. Is this camera pretty clear, Wade? Uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, okay, we can cool. see a little bit. What's that? We can see. You, you look like an angel, my man. You're crushing oh, man. it. Yeah. I didn't know it was worth me trying to switch into my other webcam. But No, you look good. Okay, um, cool. Clutter awesome. guy. Ten dollars, my man. Thank you so much. He's got a really inspirational Insta, and um, I will definitely take the mom out for coffee. I appreciate that, Maria. It really means a lot to me when you guys support the channel. Wish I could fist bump you guys or high five you guys every channel. Uh, but if you need anything um, reselling related or social media related, and you guys do support the channel, please reach out to me. And even if you don't, you can reach out to me. So, what's going on, Auction Professor? My man, always helping me out. He's a smart guy. Smart guy. Um, all right, so um, I, I want to touch base a little bit. This is kind of a different interview because you have so much information I want to get out in one hour. So can you talk a little bit about your employees? I know that that's a hot topic. Everybody wants to get virtual assistants and, and employee, employee, uh, <laughs> employees um, both at their house. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think I, can, I can give you guys a ton on that. Um, and real quick, going back to the goals. Um, I'm, I'm projecting around 250 for this upcoming year. I'm not going to try to kill myself. I'm pretty much maxed out at this point. Plus, I want to do some more document and creating. So that's going to take a lot more of my time. But um, uh, as far as the employees, I, I, the, I started with my uh, best friend's daughter. Uh, so that was a good, she was 17 when she started helping. And she was a good kid, really smart, into sports. And I just asked if you know she'd be interested in taking photos things like that to help me around. And then um, once I realized how good she was at the computer, I had her start doing my eBay listing. So I sat down with her. I literally only had to show her me listing two times. I had all this stuff typed up because I thought it was going to be a whole big ordeal. I was like finally training somebody how to do it. Right. And um, I showed her two listings and she was just off to the races making drafts. Um, after about the first week, I approved her drafts and just told her she could just go ahead and start posting. Um, now I'm to the point where I have two girls that can list, but mainly um, they are actually, we're photographing the item and I have, I don't think I have one in front of you. And I, I created these, like I call it a ready to list sheet. So it's like all the critical information that's on a printout that I just like, it's basically like circle, yes, no's. And then like what the UPC is or like what information does my virtual assistant need to create the listing? So we photograph that with the, with the, with the item laid out, we do flat lays and then we be any pictures, following that would be of the actual item until she gets to another picture with the label in it. So that's how we do utilize a virtual assistant. Um, and that's been a huge help as well. And it's also been a big um, cost savings because for like 550 an hour, um, more than half of what I pay my people, I can get the same thing done. And they're like super good with it. They're gracious. They very respectful. Um, and I try to treat them well with bonuses and stuff like that. So I, um, I think that's, that's a common theme for me is I feel like, uh, you know, at least at the last few interviews I've done on, um, liquidation that a lot of them have virtual assistants, um, and, uh, flipping profits is going to be here, uh, tomorrow. He, he pays right around, what was it? Three or three fifty per hour. So, I mean, the, the, it, it's, it's pretty crazy yeah. the amount that you pay. So. So that there is the, uh, I just printed out on like a eight by 11 sheet and then we take like 10 of them and cut them. And I'm, I'm actually going to be willing to give this up to anybody that wants it. You, you probably have to modify it, but, um, you know, product description, the quantity, the storage bin, any special notes, then I have the condition, 
Um, so you have like new, new other used parts that are not working. And underneath of it, there are different like open box, damage package, um, repackaged. And then under used, there's excellent, very good, good, average. Then we have price. Do you accept best offer? Yes or no. I don't know how much you want me to go through this, but then my three different shipping types that I use, we just circle what it is, put the package weight, the size, and then, I mean, anybody can do it once you have that critical information. That would be amazing if anybody's interested in that. Reach out to um, Liquidation Pros and, and yeah. see if you can get that. I think that would be cool. Now, one question was, um, I know you grew up with, uh, or sorry, I know you grew up big with local, I know you grew up big with local sources. Any advice for finding local wholesale connections? <laughs> yeah, so the first one I found was through Craigslist. And I still continue to find deals on Craigslist. A lot of people post there um, in Facebook Marketplace. With, with Craigslist, you want to search like huge lot, bulk lot, liquidation. I like to type in eBay because sometimes people will reference the fact that they think the items are selling for this much. If they're using the word eBay, they've took some time to look it up. You obviously got to scan through it quick because you get a lot of stuff that's not relevant. Um, the other thing you want to do is just go on Google Maps and do the same thing, but look look up liquidation, um, look up wholesale lots. Um, what else do I search for? Um things like that and you want to look at google maps like within like a 50 mile radius of your area and they'll, they'll start popping up and then you can contact those people uh with facebook there's a there's a couple liquidation groups if you just search liquidation in the groups um i can't think of the one Liqu liquidation ohio i think uh, is in the one i can't think of the name of it but um anyhow there's a lot of people going there and they post but see the biggest thing is getting as close to direct to the source as possible that's all these other people are, they're taking it, they're either cherry picking it or they're marking it up. So you've already lost out on the opportunity of your biggest potential profit. So I think we talked about me maybe doing an unboxing in a little while. I have a, a box here that we can look at. Um, this is from a cold call that I made to, it was a electronics website that I found that was within my radius that I was looking. It's actually, I'm in Maryland. This was out of New Jersey. Um, and they also have a major, um, Amazon store. So I, you know, called, cold called him, told him what I did. The guy said, it's, you know, it sounded good. Send me some information. So I, I have just a, a draft that I have typed up about what it is I do, sent it to him. And, um, like three months later, he sent me all these like old phone cases. He was like trying to unload me a bunch of, uh, which I'll sell phone cases, but I want like life proof, otter box spec. I want the name brand stuff. Not, I don't like selling these. I'm not sure if you've ever had these before, <laughs> but um, I had about 20 of them and I'm down to four. So oh my. I, had to, I, I had to pull that out. The bane of my existence, those things. Seriously. Uh, iPhone 6 Star Wars. Yes. Uh, and, hey, I got the plus though, at least. So they iPhone, iPhone plus, but yeah, uh, really good. treasure guy. Thank you so much, my man. You didn't have to do that. Um, I will definitely check your YouTube channel out too, by the way. So if you want to put in the comments, I'll check it out. I'll subscribe to you. Maybe we can get you my man on the show. So, um, all right. So, uh, let's see. That was one question. How much do you, uh, how, Oh, I guess we went over that. Do you pay your, um, in-house employees hourly or how does that work? I mean, you don't have to get too in depth if you don't want to, but yeah, I pay them by the hour and I give them the option. Um, to, they could work some stuff from home. They could take lots, you know, with them. Most of the time, they all want to work here because it's a better setup. But um, I always try to give them flexibility. And then I, and, and part of this is because when I talk to my CPA, which I'm not giving anybody advice, but he basically said they, you know, in order to make them a contract type employee, um, they need to have options to work elsewhere. They need to set their own schedules. And there's something else that I'm following as well. I can't think of it right now, but long story short, um, what was the exact question? Oh, just how much you paid. Uh, that was a question in chat, but, um, well, I, I pay between, well, minimum wage now is 10 50. So I start, everyone got bumped up to 11. It's like between 11 and 13 50. So my girl that's been here for two and a half years now, she's up to 13 50. That's hot. Hey, um, you got to pay them a little more. You got to make sure that they're happy and that they stay. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's better than doing fast food, but you know, at the end of the day, they got to feel comfortable. And I think that it'd be so much better to have somebody there for two years than it would, you know, a few months and you have to retrain somebody, especially how, especially working like you do on top of that. So, so I'm going back to that. It's my, um, my buddy's daughter 
and it's her best friend. And then it's actually the two neighbors across the street. So <laughs> that keeps it easy. Yes. Um, um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't look forward to trying to actually hire someone I didn't know. Um, but there's enough people out there now that like with my age group, enough family, friends, the kids are now getting into the job hunting. So I already have a couple of people in my mind to, uh, to, to reach out to if I need more, more help. So tell me, um, let's get in the nuts and bolts here. So tell me exactly like, first of all, I want to, I want to ask you like, what do you recommend somebody that's looking into getting the wholesale or liquidation? What do you recommend that they do first? Like if there's a few things that maybe you learned that you would recommend for somebody new, like day one to start, um, we talked a little bit about it, like cold calling, but what, what kind of stuff do you recommend there? And then also, um, give us like a little insight if like, cause for me, I'm always like, look, if you want to get into wholesale and liquidation and I'm not nearly as big as you and some of the others start locally so you can physically go there and see the products in your area. Uh, but do you have any websites that you recommend or like a uh, wholesale um, where you can look up wholesale company websites? And then also um, I know I'm asking you a lot here, but have you heard of uh, Craigslist where some, sometimes you can, I don't know the exact thing. It's been a while, but supposedly there's a script out there you can buy that like scrubs Craigslist every day to make sure there's some of the keywords that you mentioned that you can get access to the ad first, you know, or, or a lot quicker than most people that are doing it manually. Have you heard of that as well? Yeah. And I've used that. I'm sure someone in the chat can tell us there's a couple different ones that do it. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but right now I'm to the point where like, I, I have other, so many sources for inventory that I'm not, it's normally like when I'm slow, I'll still re look on Craigslist and see what I can come up with. Um, I'm not so much, I probably should be doing that now just because you never know what's going to pop up. You can miss out on opportunity. Um, for the, for the people starting, um, I mean, liquidation is tough in the sense of if you're doing it by yourself, it's a lot of like gritty hard work. You know, at the first story, at least you have the opportunity to look at the item and make that decision there with liquidation. You're kind of not sure exactly the condition, what you're going to get. So you also, you also have to have the mindset, like, am I prepared to be able to go through all this stuff? after the fact, after I've already paid for it, do all the listings and all that. For me, I, I really enjoyed the idea of like building a business that I could have help and I could, you know, literally right now I could take two or three weeks off and it would continue to run. Um, they can ship, they can do all that stuff. So I'm more like, I get enjoyment out of not only buying it and like seeing how good a deal I got and how much profits there, but I like building new processes like, uh, you know, kind of building different foundations to the business of how we do stuff. So I just got, I think everyone's got to take a step back and think of it as what is it that you really want? Do you like the, you know, you know, 200,000 is a big number, but it's not, it's definitely not going to be for everybody. Um, it's, it's a lot of work and you definitely are going to need help. So, but as far as getting started, um, when my, some of my local sources dried up two 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 and a half, three years ago is when I found liquidation.com. Um, I, la I forget the last time I checked, but I've won over 200 auctions on there. It was spent well over $20,000 with them. Um, it was, that was kind of like my steady, um, hustle was with them and uh, specifically all the links. And in my videos, I only buy from, I bought from one or two other people, but never had a good, good experience with the Amazon returns and liquidation. So there are specific sellers on there and of which there's one that only sells Amazon returns. Um, it used to be called online returns and now they put called it Amazon liquidations. But um, that's a good place to start. The one thing I will say is if you're going to try that and you have the funds, it's best to get a pallet. So they sell lots. It'll be like, if you look at the pictures, it might be two boxes. It might be four. Um, most of their pallets will hold 16 boxes. So if you, you can win like five or six lots and then combine them all. And it's ridiculous how much money you can save in shipping. Um, the, the one video I have, one of the first videos I did um, when I referenced it, it was, it was like $600 I saved by combining them all into one pallet. So it's a little bit little bit more work because you do have to call liquidation.com and set it up, but they'll, they'll still deliver it to you and they use um, UPS Freight brings it through them. So, you know, there's, uh, there, who's that guy on the, on, I forgot his name. I'm not subscribed to him. I guess I should be, but he always buys the Amazon. He's got like 30, 35,000 followers on YouTube and he always buys the Amazon um, returns. I can't remember his name. Um, uh, um, I know who you're talking about. He has more than that now. I think. Does he, does he go through liquidation.com to, to buy that? Yeah. Yes. 
I think he has one within like an hour of him too. I know you're talking about. Fran is it franchise kicks? Yeah, something like that. Sorry, uh, is like selling shoes. That's yeah. the other thing everyone should be mindful of. There's there's this big hubbub right now about liquidation, and there's like people like me that are actually getting down and doing it, and there's other people that are doing a lot of unboxing videos, and they're making enough money off of YouTube and everything else they're doing that they're not really too concerned about how you know how good a deal it was. So you got to take that into consideration when you're watching some of these people. Um, the stuff I get, I know I'm not the best yet. I'm kind of new to YouTube, but I'm like showing you when I'm showing the stuff, I'm showing, bringing the lists up and like giving you bullet points of what I found, what I look for. Like for instance, one tip would be in liquidation.com in the man manifest, the manifest is a list of everything that you should be expecting in the lot. You might see there happens to be like five of one item. It's not very likely that five of the same item got returned and ended up in the same box. Most likely that would be considered shelf pools, which are brand new items. So that's one tip I can give you is when you see a lot of the same thing in a lot, not always, but most of the time it's brand new product. So do you have any, like how, how key are relationships? I'm assuming you have some local uh, relationships like locally to your area. And some people are asking what state you lived in, by the way, I forgot that question. Forgot that um, question. Yep. But, I'm in Maryland. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maryland. Actually you did say that. Um, but so what, what's some keys to like building local relationships with, you talked a little bit about that. Like, do you recommend like getting a list and cold calling? Is there, do you know of a good site that kind of shows all the wholesalers, um, you know, that is in your area or in your States or anything like that? No, you know, I don't know of one yet, but that's not a bad idea for someone to put that out. I, I do know the, I'm really drawing a blank on the Facebook group, but there's a ton of, uh, most of the people that have liquidation companies are going to be on Facebook. But what I'm trying to push is for people to actually try to find not liquidation companies, but deal directly with, you know, companies that are brands. So whatever, you know, Joe Blow's electronic shop, you know, basically the top five to 10 Target, Walmart, they already have all their ducks in a row. Most of that stuff's going to a company online called B stock. Um, I do work with deal with them. Um, someone else in the chat had asked about other than liquidation.com. B stacks, B stock is B dash stock. There's another one that you can find pretty much all the big players on. Um, there's other like blue lots and uh, bulk, but a lot of those are they're curated in the box. Anytime someone's curating the box, then hands were put on it. With B stock, when you buy from there, you're dealing directly with Target, directly at Walmart. But with what I was going prior to that is you want to take those like top 10 corporations, wipe them off your list. And now you want to say, okay, who can I get in the door with that's either locally or has a pretty big franchise, but it's not as big as those guys. And you want to, you could walk right in the door and talk to the manager. Um, what else can you do? You could obviously call them if you want to try that route. Um, you know, bring a dozen donuts from Dunkin' Donuts that goes a mile for the store. I've done that before. Um, but really a lot of it now can be done online. So, uh, you know, auction professor brought up a good point. I think that a lot of people, you know, a couple things, right? And I'm not an expert here, obviously, but, um, you know, a lot of people are kind of stop right in their tracks when they see that they, you know, are gated. And so a lot of times what you can do is you can go to the actual manufacturer of that actual product. And, um, you know, if you, and it's tough too, because you do have to have some capital, I'm presuming, um, to, to, you know, you got to purchase some inventory for them to get an invoice that you can send to Amazon. But can you talk a little bit about that? Like, uh, the fact that like when you look up manifest, no matter where you're getting your items, you're obviously looking to see if you're gated or ungated in some of that products to sell on Amazon, right? <laughs> Correct. And that's, that is going to be a big hang up for a lot of people. Um, last, the beginning of last year, I pretty much got ungated and everything. So, and that was not for me having, um, invoices or anything like that. That's because my seller track record, how much product I've sold with, you know, no, I think I had one negative in the course of a year. So, um, one day I happened to check, uh, now there's still other brands. Like I can't sell Levi's for some reason. I can't sell Levi's, but I can sell North face Patagonia, like these crazy high name brand stuff, but there's certain ones where the brand itself still, you still need approval from that brand. Um, what I would recommend is if you're really interested in it, you take the items you can't sell and you put them on eBay. The items you can, you continue to send those as much as you can to Amazon because over time you want to build a good track record. And then ultimately the goal being you get ungated. Now there's, uh, as auction professor said, you as you're growing now, 
off your liquidation, you start to branch out in the wholesale. You have more capital. You can, you're also, you know, you know how to talk the game a little bit better. It's a lot easier to work with these people. If, you know, even if you only have $5,000 in your bank account, you know, you can make it seem like you're a bigger seller. The hard thing for me with the wholesale is I don't have a, a brick and mortar or anything like that to even, um, a fake, you know, I don't even have a fake, a, a lot of people use like a, uh, a warehouse or their storage as a brick and mortar. So I don't even have that. Cause I rent, I work out of my house and I rent another residential property. So I can't use either of those for wholesale. Now, is there a, by the way, um, treasure, thank you so much for the crazy, crazy support. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, definitely message me on Insta and I would love, 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 love. I love storage unit videos and storage unit YouTube channels. So reach out to me, my man. Um, give me some mistakes. Give me some mistakes. Now this could be Amazon or eBay. Give me some mistakes you have made. And I'm sure you made some bad buys. Give me this some might, bad buys. This might be a $3,000 mistake right here. Yeah. I just got these too. Um, I thought they'd be pretty hot around Christmas. I've sold four of them. I have, uh, 240. So, but I also priced them high around the holidays. I actually just dropped my price today. It's, it's a Dale Earnhardt 124th. Um, it's like his last race, a commemorative car from QVC. So that uh, that was a little disappointing that I only sold a few of them. But like I said, I dropped my price. And I'm still at my lowest price right now. I'm still going to double my money. But they were retailing for like 60 And I was figured I'd put them up for that and see what happens. So that's uh, one mistake. Another I wouldn't necessarily call it a mistake, but other disappointments is you you sometimes will see like when you're buying you'll, some um, manufacturers or suppliers will give you what do they consider the grade to be. A lot of times you can be disappointed by the grade. So they might say A, B, you know, or like like new or the, a lot of times they'll say like if it's those conditions, that means there's no salvage. But then when you get it, a lot of it is salvaged or they clearly should have pulled certain stuff um, that can be disappointing. But when you're buying and we could talk about like buying percentages that's important when you when you know what to buy at you're already kind of calculating the fact that there that could happen what if you buy the pallet obviously it depends on what it is right um you know electronics is going to be different than clothing but what percentage would you say you've got to kind of incorporate like in your minds that possibly defective merchandise you know especially with electronics like do you have kind of an idea like how much that you need to understand that if you're buying this big pallet, 10, 15% of it's going to be no good. Yeah. Normally with, um, with what they consider a B or returns, I'm looking at, uh, around 20 to 25% loss of just right off the top, just to be safe. That's what I go with. If you, if it ends up only being 10, even better for you. But then another thing to consider is a lot of times the, um, the lots are marked up to MSRP, which is actually higher than the store even puts it at, not even on the sale price. So like, um, a certain like website might, the manufacturer might say, well, this MSRP is $59.99, but Target might carry it for $39.99. Well, a lot of times they use that. They always use the highest value. So another thing I'll do is I'll knock another 20% off for that, for that reason alone. So that's 40% roughly right there uh, taken off, which leaves you with about 60% left. Um, what else do we take off? Normally, I'm, you're trying to buy your buy price for liquidation should be somewhere between ten to twenty percent, is what where I'm at. Are you negotiating these deals? Like, have you built relationships with maybe Liquidation.com or or maybe smaller companies? That are you in, are you negotiating, or they give you a price and that's just, it? Just right now, the two or three um, connections that I have that I've built, I, I'm able to to negotiate. Um, like this this. Um, um, think of forgetting the name, uh, Mophi, Mophi cases that I have here. Uh, I negotiated that the guy, I, I sent him an offer. He said, it's too low. Um, they said they were looking to get two grand. I said, well, how about if there was like six, I went through and there was like 64 items that I was not interested in. They were, they were selling for like $20 or less on eBay. I said, how about you take those out? And I lowered my price only like a hundred bucks to 1480 and, uh, he took it. So and so I guess there's a, once you build the relationships, I'm assuming that they probably email you too when they get new products, right? Yes. Yep. I, one thing I want to ask you something that to be careful of that, again, I'm no expert here, but I think one thing that people understand need to understand with blue lots, and this is just my opinion, 
Um, and it could be with any company, but we'll use Blue Lots now named Source for a uh, for an experiment here. But if you see stuff on their site, you have to understand that they probably already contacted people before that to see if they can offload it. And now it's on their site. So there's a multitude of middlemen in between that and then you're buying it. Am I correct to say yeah. that? Like, I mean, I don't know per, for sure what they're, what they're doing, but I would assume um, there's a there's a lot of companies that do that. And there's also, you got to be careful. With, there's companies that will have their own eBay and Amazon stores and then they're offloading the cheaper stuff that they don't want to you know, deal with. So you see a lot of items that are 30 or 40, $40 less. And that's like the highest point they're getting. It's probably cherry picked lots where, you know, typically when you have a bulk lot, you're going to have at least some kind of items over a hundred dollars at some point, you know, whether if it's clothing, you might have a nice North face jacket or something. If it's electronics, you could have a high-end electronic. Something's going to be in there. Um, so they, I would assume that those lots are, are definitely being cherry-picked. What? Yeah. I, I bet the percentage of people that, just like people that do storage units, they they see like the allure of the storage unit, but then they realize, you know, you've got, you, there's a lot of work. you got to pull that stuff out. You've got to clean it. you got to sort it. you got to find out what's donating, what's going to the trash. you got to be able to dump. Like, what, what is the what is the what is the crazy stuff that you have to deal with that um you know people don't see they just see that you know that they just see what they want to see which is a pallet at their door they, it's like a pallet comes at their door and it's like ding money 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 but then you gotta understand there's a lot of work to it so what's the nitty-gritty work that you do that nobody sees with clothing you have like open box stuff so not open box but open package not new and you you'll get underwear in there it's like oh god you know do I even want to pull these out and see if they've been used or not? Um, stuff like that. I'm trying to think with the like a lot of times the um, the old bait and switch move where you're really looking for this high dollar item and then it's totally something else in there, like a rock or something like that. Um, I'm trying to think with the, the one of the girls found a whole pocket full of um, dog treats and a jacket the other day. <laughs> that someone returned and forgot to take the dog's treats out of it. So I mean, you re you really have to go through the stuff with a fine tooth comb. Um, but I had it figured out last year, I was averaging like two to $3 per item in labor. So from start to finish, based on the amount of time, the amount of time that I was paying them on a weekly basis compared to the amount of listings we were uploading and items we were processing. You know, that's a good question. Um, what, what are, so give me all the costs breakdown, obviously not obviously depends on the item you're buying. I'm, I'm not saying like the actual per penny cost, but. Like you had to buy it, time spent, you know, what, like, give me the process in which once it arrives, once you click buy, what's, what's like the, the stages of it, you know, going from when you buy it all the way to when you're selling it. So when you, when you buy it, you have to figure out shipping. A lot of the bigger companies already have, um, you know, major shipping companies lined up like RNL carriers is a big one. Um, UPS freight, those type of situations. So they might already provide you with a discounted shipping rate. Um, if not, you're gonna have to go out and get your own. Um, there's a good one. I think it's called, I might be saying it's wrong, but I use freight quote, I believe. And you put, you can put it in there and it will populate all the shipping com companies like instantly compete for the, the, for that load. So that's a pretty good one. I've gotten good deals on that freight quote. And then, um, so you, you win it, um, from, I'll, let's talk about my process because it's going to be different depending on your operation. But for me, I'm working out in my basement. So I win it. It shows up. I get home from work and there's two or three pallets in my doorstep. Now we have to carry all this stuff down into my basement. So I normally, you know, I know the day that's going to arrive. So I normally have help. I try to arrange them to be on the Fridays um, that I'm, you know, I'm home anyway. So get the help, get it down in there. And then as we're bringing it in, we're trying to subsort different stuff. So um, if it's clothing, we're trying to match brands up and then once we got it in, then we want to go and take that specific brand and go through the entire process. And the reason you want to do that is you want to have similar items so you can do the quantities right then and there. You want to, you got to have a little bit of room to be able to process it like that. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself finding the same item over and over and then realizing that you got to figure out where that listing is, go into eBay and add it to it. Um, so what my girls are doing right now is we have a table set for what they think is brand new. And then I go back and look through it and confirm it's Amazon worthy. They don't really make any Amazon decisions just because I've been suspended from there before and I don't want that to happen again. <laughs> um, 
and then they're my my like senior worker is she's to a point that where she can make the call and looking up the pricing, creating the ready to list sheet, taking you know help getting the other helpers to take photos. So and now it's getting to the point where I'm just more doing the external business parts of trying to find more inventory, find new connections, and work on the YouTube channel now too. So um, tell me a little bit about that Amazon suspension. Can you do you have any Amazon tips out there too, like for beginners that um, really to join Amazon? Third, the 30 up label suck. You want to use the um, scan, scan and ship. I don't know if everybody knows what scan and ship is. It's doing Amazon, but you need the 450 label printer. And basically, once you add, like we'll have one computer station where we're adding stuff in. But as I'm getting ready to box it, I can scan the UPC. It knows that's in my inventory. The label pops up. I hit print. It comes out. Throw it on there. And then in the separate tab, you have your work and shipment. So now I can take click on that, add it to the shipment and go. So it's pretty quick to build a shipment. Um, that's one tip that, that I used, started using a couple of years back. The suspension was like five years ago. And that was because I didn't understand what commingled inventory is. And for those that don't know, commingled inventory is saying, okay, I have this condition of this product and I'm going to send it in and mix it with anyone else who has that condition. And when it sells, the customer, you get, if yours if your sales based on price, the customer gets whatever product is closest to them, not necessarily yours. So one of the big deals I got from one of my original wholesalers was um, Best Buy phone cases. And it was all like name brand stuff. And a lot of it was new. It was like closeouts. <clears throat> well, I did commingled inventory. And the reason I knew it was the, the returns and the issues were from other people is because when I called it back, it wasn't even the same labels on the item. And that's when I was like, Oh crap, like something happened. I didn't even understand. I was like, oh, I'm going to save like 20 cents because I don't have to label it. I can just send it all in together. Well, that's, that's not the way that works. You always do your own inventory and never do commingled inventory. Uh, what, where do you see, what do you see? Like, you know, obviously selling online. And first of all, my, I guess I forgot to ask this. Did you get any of the Toys R Us inventory? Um, I went there a couple of times. So we have a local store here. Um, I, I, I didn't find too much stuff. My concern with that, with anything that's like store clearance and liquidation, is that's a major company that's liquidating all this stuff at the same time. So you're going to have every store with those same products and a lot of its resellers buying it. So you're going to have tons of competition. Um, one strategy with that stuff is like to buy it and then sit on it for like a year and let a lot of the low ballers sell out. Um, and that's another strategy I can give for people is like, um, right now we, it's kind of already passed, but you should have already bought like a, if you're a clothing seller, spring and summer clothing, um, you should have bought that when that was liquidated in about a month or two, you don't want to start buying the winter jackets and you want to hold them till next fall. So once you start building your business, um, I have a pallet of like shorts, and um, short sleeve shirts, bathing suits that are all over in storage waiting for summer. So basically you want to be a season ahead then, right? Yeah, a couple seasons ahead. Yep. Yeah. Because you're getting, most people don't want to buy that stuff at that time. They're looking for the quick flip because they're newer or um, it's just with the nature of the, everyone wants that excitement of finding that quick flip. But really like the best stuff is going to be buying the winter stuff. Um, in like two months because coats and all that have such a ha higher average sale price than everything else. How do you, uh, how do you balance Amazon and eBay? I mean, I get that you have employees, right? But how do you balance them? And then also, um, you know, I know we're taking two steps back, but how do you communicate with your virtual assistants? Those two things. Um, so for the virtual assistants, I use Upwork and I do everything through the app. That's been great. Um, they have a message in there. Um, once I, I, I was, I had like three candidates that could use the platform. Octiva is what I already had. I had Octiva. It's like, link, um, was it Inkfrog, Octiva? There's another one out there. But anyhow, I uh, she was already advanced with that. So I just kind of asked her a couple questions about it. And you can look on like how much, um, how much time they've put in, how much money they've made to date. And this person was already making like $15,000 a year or something like that just doing – um, eBay and you know Amazon work. So found her and the way it works for me is we photograph and I upload them to Octiva and then or is it Octivia? I think it's Octiva. Um, 
I upload them and then she can go in and create the drafts and then I can go in later and post them and just do a quick double check of everything. <laughs> um, does, does she, um, uh, how did, did you say how you found, uh, found her? Did I miss that? You just Google whatever you're looking for. So I looked, I, my, my keyword was Octiva, um, because that's very niche. If you type eBay, you'll probably get a lot of results, but I knew I was looking for someone who had experience with that platform. And there was a bunch of people that showed up that did. Um, I just went through, I had conversations with at least three people and I decided through the, my quote unquote interview process to go to, with this one, which she's been with me for, a, you know, over a year now. So a year and a couple months. Now she is your, she's, she works only for you though, right? No, she works for a bunch of people. Oh, does she? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so when you pay them hourly, they're, they're also doing stuff for other people then too. What say the the, the uh, virtual assistants? Yeah, yeah, they have all kinds of different contracts that they can work. There's no like, there's a contract with me. I think I stated up to like I might need her up to 20 hours a week. So she had to at least commit to that that she could provide me up to 20. But I, she's she's probably only working like 10 hours a week. She's doing like 10 listings an hour on average, nine to 10 listings an hour. That's now. Um, you said bonuses. I'm curious how how does that work? Do you just give her like like a, a lump sum or is it just an hourly bonus, you know, every once in a while or during the busy season? Yeah. I don't really like just kick her like 20 or 50 bucks. If it was like a hundred listings that she knocked out. And, um, a lot of it too is like errors. If there's not a lot of errors on, on her end, you know, cause everybody, when you're constantly doing that, you're going to make mistakes. I don't have, I care how good you are, but with, with a lot of like the Octiva and ink frog, you can set templates. So a lot of, a lot of our stuff is all templates that are in there. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty quick and straightforward. Um, so a lot of, Oh, oh, sorry about that. Um, well, first and foremost, man, man, give some love to Liquidation Pros, guys. Give them some some hearts or some like you know crazy emojis down there because boy, dropping for dropping some knowledge. Um, drop, drop, Mike, drop, Mike, drop. Oh yeah, we both. Have, <laughs> I need to get one where I can just drop. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, you know, I'll send you one. My, my kids probably have a couple laying around upstairs. I'll send you one. Yes, yes. Um, all right. How I know one thing that people struggle with, uh, especially if they do not have employees, but obviously it's a little different situation. Um, how are you, somebody gave you burger and fries, by the way, Ooh, nice. uh, how do you balance eBay and Amazon and, and what qualifies for <laughs> stuff that goes on eBay? Is it just the stuff that you don't want to sell on Amazon or just, I mean, give me an idea there. Yeah. I wish I had my sheet and I, I did create another document, which is like a sales, not a sale. It's kind of like a sales funnel, but what it is, is um, what, first of all, the first and foremost, what is the weight? Let me step back. Everything brand new is, it has to be questioned for Amazon. I don't, I don't send used or open box stuff to Amazon. I only do brand new. Um, but so then if it's not that it's going to eBay. So then with eBay, I have a couple parameters. Um, some of the pricing is based on the weight of the item. So I would go as low as like 50, 15 to 17. I think about put down because like I said, I have the sheet for them like 13 to 17 bucks. If it's first class, I'm willing to do that um, with free shipping because most times we might have like 10 of that item. So it's worth it. If there's only one item, you know, you're spending two or three bucks in labor by the time they process it, bag it, list it, photograph it, all that stuff, my shipping time, shipping label, shipping package. So I, you know, if you're taking three bucks off plus fees, it's probably not enough profit there. Um, Something like that, if it's not enough profit, I'm boxing it up for like a local sale. I have my storage unit is like packed full of ready stuff. A lot of it's priced and ready to go. Um, but like I said, they have this kind of flow chart. Okay. Now, now let's say it's one to two pounds. We're looking for items that are like 20 to $25 in that range because we're shipping priority. And then for anything over two, I want it to be at least, if I'm going to sell on eBay, I want it to be at least over 25 bucks. And depending on the item, if it's really heavy, we'll do calculated shipping. So I don't know if you recall, but my name before this was free online shipper. So I, you know, I did a ton of, you know, I built my business on the concept of free shipping. Cause that was like around that time, four or five years ago, free shipping was huge. And I was like, I know that that's going to be a major part of reselling. So, but uh, obviously it's not as fitting now because I'm not, I can't do free shipping on a five pound item from Maryland to California. It's going to cost me 20 bucks. Um, it's good. It's good to know your shipping. I was talking about that on my channel, knowing what your shipping options are. Um, 
most items for me, the, if it's under two pounds, normally the max I'm going to pay is like 10 bucks in shipping. But if it's going locally, it's going to be as cheap as like six or seven. Are you now, using up uh, uh, what are you using pirate for your shipping as well? I'm actually not using pirate. I'm getting, uh, I looked into it once, but I'm trying to think of the, uh, um, I know it's, a, it's based on the cubic rakes. I'm trying to think of what boxes I would use that would help with because Basically, I use all flat rate boxes, all the flat rates, um, and then um, all like the padded and the legal envelopes and all that stuff. So I, I, I've been slacking on that. I think um, Chris had talked about it a while back, or someone that came on and talked about pirate ship, and I just pirate. What is it called, pirate? Yep. But the pirate ship, the pirate ship. Um, Real talk, mentor, five dollars. I appreciate that, my man. Seriously, you are one of the most generous in the community. I just saw you. I don't know if um, I, I don't know if uh, Rockstar Flipper is still lurking in chat, but um, I know you are a big supporter of his as well. So I appreciate that. Um, how is it on Christmas for you? Like, do you just walk down to your basement and it's like, huh, my aunt or my cousins would like this? You know, do you even shop for Christmas? You just walk down your basement and pack pack things up and set it in. Yeah. Um, throughout the year, I do keep stuff in mind for. For people like oh my brother would really like this or my mom you know this is something for my mom and i will keep like a small tub of stuff that i've kind of collected this year i actually did like a um i had my my siblings and their husbands and wives draw a number and i had like two boxes of stuff you'd go up and pick something out so it was kind of like and then after like everyone did one round it was just like a big mad dash for it was like clothing and all kinds of different stuff in there but um because my wife has already get some like you know more personalized gifts, so it's just fun, something fun to have and to do. But you know, uh, most of the times you see me wearing like this is probably from a lot, you know, the clothing, the watches from a lot. That that's definitely one of the benefits is you can you can buy stuff from your business for cost. Now, um, uh, Scott, the best beard in the business, he knows a lot about. It. He said a shoe box is great cubic, bo uh, is a great cubic box for for pirate ships. So, yep. um, what does your wife think of you? Like, is she, sometimes is she like, slow down, slow down, man. You got, you're working hard. You're working hard. How does it, how does she help you with the business too? Yeah, she definitely does that. Um, because once I get going, I mean, probably the way I'm talking now, I'm, I'm kind of super, you know, I get rolling, I'm ready to, to knock stuff out. And, uh, it's hard for me sometimes to sit down and focus with her. And I really need to, put the phone away, put, take the business off my mind. we like to do like a lot of like weekend trips, um, you know, week long trip in the summer. And then normally around the holidays, typically I'm off for like, I take like a break for like two weeks between Christmas and new year's. I mean, I'm still selling and shipping, but I'm normally not working that hard. Unfortunately this year with all the helpers, they're all off on Christmas break. So all they want to do is work. They worked more than they did the entire year in those two weeks. So it was like, I worked way more. So I'm actually taking a little bit of a break right now even though I'm, you know, we're still working and they're working. I had two people here today working. Um, I was going to ask you this, but I forgot. I asked you the Toys R Us question first, but where do you see this in like the next five, 10 years? Like, do you see yourself doing the same thing in the next five or 10 years? Like where can you, where do you see like Amazon and eBay in the, in the future, in the near future? Like where, where, where do you think it's going? Yeah. I mean, I think everything, everything is going to change no matter what within five years. Think about what you were doing five years ago and then five years before that. There's always going to be changes coming along. So five years from now, it could be completely different to what I'm doing. Um, I just try to stay focused on what the opportunities are in front of me and then also not be complacent. I was also just talking about this and and just uh, knowing that other stuff is going to come along. Should I be dabbling with that and experiencing it? I did. I have looked at Poshmark quite a bit, but I'm still not ready to make that leap. And I don't, I'd love to hear um, other people's feedback on that. Cause for me, it was more based on, I looked up some, I signed up and I was kind of cross-referencing some pricing and it seemed like they were around the similar, um, similar pricing or eBay was actually selling for a little bit more. So take a pair of Levi's 514 men's jeans, for instance, I kind of felt like I could get a little bit more like closer to 30 bucks on eBay, but Posh was a little bit closer to like the 20 to 25 range. So I wasn't like, too impressed for me to make this all this extra leg work um, with the cross posting to make that jump just yet. But I know there's a big opportunity there. I think that um, 
Poshmark got a new round of funding, and I would assume that they're going to probably branch out into Canada because Canada is easy and start and off international here. I think that would probably be a goal for 2019 for them or 2020. But remember, um, you can't offer your buyers uh, free shipping, you know, if, if you send them a private offer, but they sh they pay shipping on Poshmark. So I, I find that actually your items sell for more on Poshmark than they do eBay. I feel like eBay – Unless you're like niched out into unique items like the auction professor, he sells, you know, older toys and different stuff like that that you can't get. Obviously, Poshmark, you can't do hard goods and stuff. But that being said, I feel like eBay for clothing, unless it's like vintage or old or unique or got a cool color pattern or a really named brand, I feel like it's just, you know, kind of like a garage sale in a way um, where Poshmark's a little bit more upscale and you'll make more money. But that being said, though, on Poshmark, you can't just do like random brands. You have to do name brands, you know. And I think one thing, thing too, guys, is um, I'm not an extreme Poshmark expert. But if you want to know what is selling, when they have their parties, you know, when you share through the party, it will tell you what the brands are that they're looking for. And I would just source those items. And I was actually looking to use um, ThreadUp, too. ThreadUp's a really cool site where you can basically send them um, your inventory and then they'll give you a check and they it's over like 35,000 brands and they send they send you a prepaid mailing label you throw it in there and you ship it to them and uh, and then they send you a check for it so that was kind of unique they they sell like 38,000 used clothing it's a used clothing thread up uh, per day or something crazy I don't know it was intense wow. but um, yeah, seen some other um, some other people posting about that app uh, was it Rinzi? I know they use I think they use them along with a million other places but my biggest thing is like the scalability of it i'm looking for um you know can they accept multiple quantities how much legwork is it to manage that additional application i'm kind of i've got myself pretty much maxed out to this point so adding even like with the pirate ship shipping it's like that's another platform for me to learn and it's just you know i need that's something i do need to do i have a little bit of downtime but because i do know about i understand cubic shipping rate but um if you guys want to go christmas shopping next year just just go to liquidation pro's house his basement oh yeah oh that wow. it's that he'll even give you a couple of fish um, yeah. duck. um all right so <coughs> fine showing us what you have to your right or left probably yeah right. to my right i'm see if, see how this looks on camera you'll have to see probably put it up on this uh, chair here so this i have three of these boxes here and all, all they are is amazon boxes that my supplier sent them in but now i have to the Lord above, I haven't opened these. Um, how can, what's your, uh, I think you look, you look pretty good. I'm going to lock the screen on you though. Can you see the box? Not really. All right, let's, let me just see if I can open and hold it up. But basically this is like the Mofi cases. I'll pull a couple out once I open it. So let's see what we got here. So uh, it's a. Uh, I had some. I wrote down some notes. Fourteen hundred eighty bucks. One hundred and eighty units. Um, retails over eight thousand uh, dollars. Cost me fifty bucks to ship from New Jersey. So, I mean, this is the type of stuff I like to buy. Um, Mofi wireless charger base. Um, that's a Samsung Galaxy S3. So that's pretty old. That's probably not worth a whole lot. Another one of those bases. Let's see if there's anything cool. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> iPhone 5. Now, what's funny about the iPhone 5 is huge overseas as far as um, I have um, uh, life proof cases I'm getting 50 bucks a piece for for iPhone 5. So keep that in mind when you're outsourcing. Uh, this one here looks brand new. A lot of times with the phone accessories, the, the uh, customer orders the wrong size. They ordered the regular and they meant to get the plus. A lot of people actually don't know what phone they have, which is kind of surprising. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. That's funny. You know, here's one of those big 20,000 um, milliamp chargers. Some of these are like regular, like a hundred bucks. Uh, can you, can you guys see this? Yeah. Oh yeah. You're doing a per uh, Now this, some of these probably are new too though, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them you'll see, like, this one's busted open box. Most, and this will be all eBay or probably eBay, this, right? Yeah, all of this will be eBay. None of this will go to Amazon. Yeah. This one looks pretty new. Um, 
a lot of them are just like the portable. There's a lot of, so there's three boxes of this. Mm -hmm. um, one of them's going to have a lot of iPhone 7 ones. And the iPhone 7 ones are still selling for like 40 to 50 bucks. But so, so like, here's a perfect example. Um, you know, one, one listing and I have three of the same exact item. You know, if it, that's, if they're 30 bucks a piece or 20, even, even if the five is only 20 bucks a piece, I paid eight dollars a piece. Now, granted, I'm gonna I will have some loss in here, but um, for the most part, these I, I bought these from my supplier before, and they've been pretty good. I mean, they look they yeah. look brand new. So, and that's the type of stuff you want to try to find because um, normally in a night we could go through all of these, and then in another the next day um, the girls could get them uploaded, and then in a couple hours my lister can have them up. So. It, that's, that's probably one of the best ways to expand and grow your business. But, you got you got to love how they ship it in an Amazon box. Exactly. Well, they uh, they do sell on Amazon too. So, I mean, like you said though, you paid what five or four something, right? Um, and if you get twenty bucks for a few of them, I mean that that adds up quick. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, goals, goals. Um, so, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, like. Um, first and foremost, like, do you, if you only had one platform, which one would you want to sell on? Is it now, if the money was the same, I know it's hard to picture or imagine, but which platform do you prefer eBay or Amazon? I personally prefer Amazon. Cause it, for me is a lot easier. It's a lot less um, work. The only problem is I get a lot of look with liquidation. You don't get a whole lot of new stuff. So, um, you know, you can sell used products on there. I just felt that there was more returns with that. And um, it's not the, you know, these, if I took the same, the, say those iPhone cases, um, they're open box. I'll actually sell more for the same price on eBay than I will on Amazon. Cause most people on Amazon are going right for that buy box. They open it up and it's like 59.99. There, there's a few people like myself. Cause I'm, pretty frugal and cheap. I will look and see, okay, can I get a used like new from Amazon warehouse deals for like $20 less? But otherwise I'm not going to probably buy from some, you know, random other seller, not knowing. Um, whereas eBay, I feel like, you know, you can, uh, you can do a little bit more research with the seller and, and people, you know, I have over 5,000, you know, feedback. So it's, it's a no brainer. And I'm able to also keep that in mind as you guys are trying to grow your business. Um, you definitely want to maintain and, and be a top rated seller. Um, and you, when you have that and you have the good feedback, you can price a little bit more than everybody else. I'll normally price um, 10 to 20% more than the competition. Not like, so if you take, uh, I normally tell the girls, like when you're looking something up, say 10 solds come up. Okay. Let's eliminate the top, the top two and the bottom two. Cause you're always going to have outliers. And then kind of see where's the highest point at now for that. Like, where do we want to be? And then go up a little bit, like another 10 or 20%. And then if it sits for a month, I'll run a sale, you know, 10% off. If it sits for three months, I might put it 20% off. So that's another, uh, another tip for you guys. Now, is it, um, uh, by the way, I, I think that's, it's amazing. You can keep all this up. I mean, that, that alone, even though you have help, it's crazy. What, how doesn't it, isn't it cool though teaching your kids kind of like how to how to how to just run a business? I mean, it's got to be awesome, you know. Yeah, you man. Gotta, you'll you'll be there soon, you know. What's your how old is your oldest? He's he's already kind of helping me. He's already okay. giving me stuff like if I drop something, but yeah, he's two yeah. years old. So, so and uh, that's the other thing is my um, with the helpers, we always provide them dinner or offer dinner if they're here or snacks and drinks and stuff like that. Um, you know, they, they sit around the table and pray with us. So that's always, uh, I feel like goes a long way for them. Cause they've even said like, they love coming and working here for, for a lot of those reasons. But, um, they, the kids love coming down and helping them. Not so much daddy. They want to come down and hang out with the, with the girls that are helping. <laughs> it, it's, um, they probably think of you. I mean, obviously you're, you're, you know, you're their boss, right? And you, you cut the checks, but they probably think of you guys as an extended family in, in many ways, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and they get the value not only of, you know, getting paid, but also kind of, you know, helping with the business too, which is really cool. Um, I, I can't tell you, like, I'm really interested in liquidation. I'm really interested in wholesale. Um, you know, and I think it's such a, you know, it is a lot of work. I think people don't realize how much work it is. Um, 
you know, I'm always a big fan of like, hey, because a lot of times people they they do eBay and they want to, you know, they want to get a product that has one product that has multiple, you know, uh, multiple amount of one product, and uh, they can't pull the trigger because they don't have, you know, the money to do it. Um, they don't save for it. I think it definitely takes a little bit of money to do this, um, and the margins are not like if you go to a thrift store and you pick up, you know, a T-shirt or something and you buy for, you know, two dollars and sell for sixty or seventy. You know, so. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just really, really cool to me. It, it's fascinating to me to see somebody that does it really well because a lot of people don't do both platforms well. You know, it's only one or the other. When one does well, the other one suffers, you know. And um, do you, do you uh, for your eBay, do you have USPS pick up the packages from your house daily? Yes. Yeah, that's the other thing. I'm like good friends with the mailman and we hook them up for Christmas and we always do all the snack stuff. But at any random time, if we're having pizza or something, we'll, you know, if the wife's cooking lunch for the kids when he comes by, chill off from pizza. I mean, that goes a long way. Um, I know that, you know, my stuff's being taken care of on, on his end. The last year we lost, lost one package and it was FedEx, was like, <laughs> FedEx smart post. So, but, uh, yeah, knock on, knock on wood. <laughs> that, now, um, we're getting to the end here, guys. I want to say, do you have any questions? Put it in chats, make sure you do a couple question marks. So I see it. And we'll do a little Q and A session for ten minutes here. But um, I, is there any? You know, you probably. I don't know if you were live when you saw that. Um, when you saw that uh, video that we did with all the websites. You know, a couple of videos ago. Uh, me, Scott, Rise and Grind, a Beard Picker, and and Chris and Lauren. We did that show. Is there uh -huh. any? What what uh what websites do you use for your business? Like, is there any particular websites that you enjoy using? I'm not saying for buying inventory, but. Like, and then also how do you keep track for taxes? Do you have an Excel uh, spreadsheet? Do you, you know, what, what program do you use for that as well for your taxes? Yeah. So for my, for my taxes, I I'm still old school because when I started the business, I didn't know about, you know, go get the go daddy uh, bookkeeping. I knew I heard about it. Um, I knew more so about like QuickBooks, but basically I extract everything from PayPal and then um, run it through Excel on my own. So I'm able to itemize everything, sort it out and do it, do it on my own and then give it to my CPA that way. And for Amazon, same thing. I'm able to extract, extrapolate everything from it. Now, the one thing I will say is you want to make sure you have, um, you know, business bank account. So I pay for everything out of that, or I pay for it out of my PayPal, you know, debit card. So, or directly, most people are taking PayPal now too. So um, have you ever got scammed before? Uh, in your business, buying liquidation wholesale or, or anything like that? Not that I can recall, no, because I'm pretty diligent about doing my research. And, um, you know, it's I'm not ever going to show up to do a deal with someone for Craigslist and not actually open the box and look at it um, or and even take the items out or always make sure you get down deep if it's a, a bunch of stuff. Um, and you typically can get a read from someone, you know, if you if they're trying to scam you. Um, you'd be, you'd have to be more careful with the online stuff with the scamming, but that's with online why I only buy through, um, you know, these authorized main major vendors that now when you're trying to find your new sources, I would say you don't spend more than like 500 bucks on like a sample order. Now that, that might, that's probably a lot for some people, but for people in my line of business, like do like a $500 smaller order, get comfortable, get an idea, you know, build a relationship and then, you know, like for this connection here, if he calls me next week with five or $10,000 worth of stuff, um, you know, I'm not too shy to jump on it. If, if I have that opportunity, as far as the programs, I'm really, so going back to, what I said earlier, I'm pretty frugal and cheap. So if it's like 10 bucks or something, I'm probably going to pass on it. Cause I, you, I don't, if, if it's got to save me a pretty good bit of time for me to, uh, to go for it because it's going to take me time to research it and learn it. So I need to like really hear from a lot of people. Um, you guys were, a lot of people were talking about like the photo, the photo apps. I use the Amazon photo studio for all my eBay photos. So I'm not sure why everybody's not doing that. You just open up the Amazon app, go to photo studio and it automatically takes the white background out and saves it on your phone. You can upload it for eBay. Why wouldn't you just do that? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't drop a bomb like that. No, we, we need warning. We need warning, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, let's take – say that one last time. One last time for those that weren't paying attention. 
So there's a lot of apps to edit and auto adjust the white background on um, your photos. But if you're an Amazon seller, you can go in and do um, product photo studio. And then I think I can probably pull it up. You can probably see my Amazon sales. They're a little slow. Um, where uh, Where's my camera at? Do you guys get that? I don't know. Right now. 22,000 for the past 30, but you can see like the, uh, the, um, the spike around the holidays, you know? Yep. <clears throat> but then you would just simply hit the drop down and go to, um, where's it at? Product photo studio. And then from right in the Amazon app, you have a white background eliminator. So everyone, everyone should definitely be doing that because it's super awesome. It's like really good pictures. This is why this is why we do the show. This is why we do the show. Hey, all right, guys, real quick, we got it. We, you know, we always got to involve the uh, involve the live chat when we can, right? Uh, so type type one, guys, if you are already subscribed to uh, to Liquidation Pros, and type two if you were not subscribed up until tonight. I would like to see how many of you guys were already subscribed to his YouTube channel. And if you type two, meaning you were not subscribed from tonight, um, you better subscribe. He's doing a lot more content. And to also, if you can hit the thumbs up button, it doesn't pay me more, but it gets this video out um, so more people can discover him and his content. Uh, but we got a lot of twos, guys. So make sure you subscribe to his channel. Make sure you subscribe. Okay. So you just dropped a bomb. Let me see here. What was uh, what was the? Oh yeah, we got Q and A for. We'll say another seven minutes. We got Q and A. We did have a question from um, uh, the auction professor. Let's see. <sighs> see, does he have a BOP? I think that was the question. BOP. Do you know what that means? Mm, big old something. I don't, I don't know. Business uh, uh, is that business policies, business operations policies. I'm not 100% sure what he means. Uh, um, I have a, I mean, if he's talking about like the business, I have an LLC, but I'm not sure what specifically he's referring to with a BOP. I'm not like a, I'm more of, I, uh, for those who don't know, I, I finished high school and went right into the corporate, not corporate world, but went right into a full time job. I've been working there ever since. So I just hit 19 years at the same place. So that's, that's part of like a lot of, we could also another time talk about, when to go full time, when not? Because I've I've struggled with that for for a while now. But um, for me, I just I like the security. I like having the benefits, and then I like the people I work with. So I'm, I'm probably a little bit rare compared to everybody else. But um, yeah, but business owners policy. Oh, I love I um I listened to you talking to him about that uh, Geico he uses. I've actually got him calling them this week. So I don't I don't have a business owner's policy, but I need it. That's what happens when you uh, when you have you know somewhat family and neighbors helping, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, your, your interview with the auction professor was awesome. I I got a lot of nuggets from that, and that's yes. why. Yes, uh, I, he, a... I he's the he was the first. I I've been wanting to get him on for a while. In fact, he was the most requested interview um, that I've ever had, and um, and so I was really glad to get get Don on. He's got a really cool. He's kind of like you. He actually reminds me a little bit about you in the sense that he's got a very, very close knit family and some workers that are working, working for him for quite a while. So it's almost a mirror image. It's really interesting. Now, I didn't even think about that until just now. Um, but, uh, all right. So any other questions, any other questions that we have, we'll give it another four more minutes. And then I've got two last questions. Then we'll go. Cause we gotta be respectful of his time. He's crazy, crazy busy. Um, let me know if you guys have any other questions. We'll do Q and a for another five minutes. But hopefully, did you guys get a lot of good nuggets from this? I mean, that's the point is to showcase amazing people in the community because there was a lot of people that clicked two. And can you imagine if all everybody that put two had, ne had, had never seen this and he was never on, you guys would never have got those cool nuggets. And not to mention, you know, you're doing a lot more content, right? Are, can you give us a little snapshot for your YouTube channel, kind of what 2019 is going to look for you? So what I'm planning for 2019 is – um, Thursday nights, I'm going to try to do a live chat around, um, or live show around nine o'clock Eastern standard. That's my goal. But obviously if there's people here working and or stuff going on, I might have to skip a week here and there. Uh, I don't think I'll be as consistent as you were able to crush it, but, um, I'm going to be doing more hauls. So 
a lot of people like watching the unboxing and me like taking the details of going through the product and making decisions like watching my mindset so that began a lot of good feedback on that so as i do hauls and like pallet deals that i'm able to film i'm going to record that so i'm actually probably going to do one for this mofi so everyone can see um how i sort it out and you know how much product is really there um and then so that would be hopefully like once a month or so and then i have also update videos where i go back because i track if you don't know this you can create um store categories you can set your ebay categories to be the default whatever whatever you listed it in so it shows up to the customer that way but you can still put it in an ebay category of your own um it's and then that that category will stay with that item when it sells but you can go easily go and look at active okay how many actives so i'll do like for that macy's lot i did i'll call it like macy's whatever it was 107 and then i can go back to that and see in the past 30 days what i sold and then what's still active so that's a pretty cool tip and i'm pretty sure when i download it from paypal and excel it has the store category if not you can do it through ebay you better go get that mic from your from your uh, kiddos <laughs> get a little uh, another question is how do you track your inventory um good question i really don't i track it by list getting everything listed you know it's as stuff comes back in as returns or anything like that i get it sent back out i could i definitely should and could have a better tracking system um when i set up my business when i talked to my accountant he had me run it as a cash business instead of a accrual or whatever the other option is where you have to I don't know. I, I, I suggest everyone go talk to their, you know, we're not giving any kind of tax advice, but basically as money comes in, I have to you know claim it at that moment. As money goes out, I have to claim it at that moment. So it makes it a little bit easier, but my understanding is it's a lot harder down the road. Like if I ever went to sell the company or something like that, there could be, you'd have to convert it in most cases and, and then you'd be liable for a lot of taxes. Well, 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 oh. Man, what, what, hey, is there anything, oh, so I, I was asking you the questions this whole, this whole time and I was sitting back and by the way, I can see, it was almost like I'm there because I, I can see my reflection in the fish tank. It's that clean. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's cleared yeah, up. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait, wait, let me, let me lock the screen on you. Uh, can you guys see me? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm swimming with the fish. Okay. You give them this and they'll really come over. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They are smart. Wow. Yeah, That's we'll incredible. Um, that is incredible. Um, send these to your PO box. Uh, oh, them. man. No. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you, I'm glad you did that. Um, I see what you're doing. God, I, I'm flush. I, uh, you know, um, what can I say? You know, I got, I got all, all right. kinds of them over here. Yeah, um, so, uh, just another tip for these. I was doing a two pack. So, I had two different varieties and the same phone case. So I would sell them one of each color for like 12 bucks as opposed to trying to get like seven bucks for one. So that is, that is smart. Yeah. Um, because I've got like, um, so what a lot of people don't realize is I've said this before. So that's this actually got the, the, the Walmart tax on here. I definitely did not pay $3 guys. So <clears throat> what happened was they had these in clearance and what a lot of people don't realize is when you go to Walmart, you can still negotiate the clearance. Um, so what happens is you wanna, I made the mistake of going directly to the store manager. So for example, let me take two steps back. You go to Walmart clearance, they've got the whole you know shelf full of whatever, right? And you find something that you scan and that you want, whether it's for eBay or Amazon. And what happens is, is um, I tried it where I would go directly to the store manager of the whole Walmart and be like, hey, and I'm just honest with them. I'm, you know, some people may disagree with me, but I'm just like, look, I definitely resell and I've noticed that these things have been on the shelf for a very long time. I'm willing to pay, you know, buy them all right now. Um, and again, guys, some people will disagree that you would say you're a reseller. It's never, you know, it's Walmart, never been an issue with me. And they kind of want to get it out of there because remember Walmart, every, all the shelves that they have, they calculate every piece of that shelf and that's what's, you know, that costs money. Right. And they want to get other inventory on there. So if it's been there for a long time and a good example is these, but more importantly, um, I went to Wal one Walmart and they were selling horse worm medicine in Walmart. Wow. Horse worm medicine. Yeah. And it was selling, it sells great. It just been on the shelf for a while. Anyways. Yeah. I can, I can touch on that real quick. So yeah. um, the one thing you can say is, um, you know, I'm a, 
I'm a liquidation um, seller, a liquidation seller, or something along those lines. And I can, the terminology for what I do in the grand scheme of things and what a lot of the corporations refer to is lo reverse logistics. So it is a big pain for them. It's a, a pain point for them to have to take time, pay employees to pull these items, um, you know, pay someone else to scan them and add them to a manifest, then pay a commission for another company to sell them for them. Like they'd love nothing more than to have someone local. The problem is, um, even like I talked to the guys in my local target, they are, they're, they have to follow the corporate procedure. So those are going to be the hardest ones like Walmart and target to, to get in the door with. But if you can find a smaller company like that, you know, you go in there and do the same thing. Hey, I know you have these in clearance. I buy a liquidation. Um, you know, here's my card. If you ever get anything else that you would like to, you know, sell directly instead of having to worry about liquidating, that could help you out. So you, they have a pain point and you have a solution and you want to try to work together to help them out. You know, I, I uh, that that brings my thing is like I had the most success when I didn't actually go to the store manager. I went to the department manager because I went to the store manager and he, he didn't. The problem with that when you go to the store manager at Walmart is that they're like, yeah, they are the store manager, but they don't look after each department and they don't know what and uh, they don't know what's going on with that merchandise a lot of times. So what a lot of people don't realize is the store manager and even some of the department managers can scan it and see what Walmart paid the manufacturer for that product and then yeah. sometimes they'll negotiate the price with you uh, but go to the department manager be extremely nice to them and then they'll take you to the store manager and see if they can negotiate a deal but um real quick i found something very interesting i want to tell you um so there's this company that is right down the street from me it's um man what's the name of it um let me just google it right now they've got four <laughs> locations it's like a liquidation brick and mortar right um uh what's the name of it there's Here. a big one out in the midwest that has like a ton of locations i'm trying to think of the name of it yeah i mean this one isn't like uh oh look uh oh no what is it liquidation man uh, what's the name of it it's like a yellow building anyways let's see um it's not essex liquidation is it no they only have like this place only has like six locations gotcha uh oh liquidation i'm gonna put hillsborough that's probably what it is. Here we go. All right. I think I got it. And while you're uh, looking, how cool is it that we're 2,800 miles away from each other right now doing this? It is amazing. That's. Have you ever had anybody else coast to coast? Uh, I have. Here's the thing. What people don't realize is there's a lot more that goes into social media that I've known, that I've realized since I've done social media. The one thing that I can tell you that you get paid from social media. Everybody knows that. But it's the contacts you, you make. Like, for example... Um, I got an email today with a manifest of somebody that wants to offload a bunch of cleats. I'm not going to show his name, but I'll show you the exact email to, so you guys don't don't call me crazy here. Uh, but when you you know when you open up uh, or when you when you're on social media, people will contact you, and you know like this one here. Let's see if I can. So they, you know, they send you emails like this and they say they have X amount of units and it's, you know, $2 a unit or whatever the case may be. So there's a lot of perks with, with starting social media because it's easy for people that want to offload a bunch of inventory to simply type in eBay seller, message them and say, hey, I've got all this inventory. It happens all the time. So I would say every other day I get an email from somebody who wants to sell me something. Um, so that's one reason why I'm a big fan of social media, trying to get people on there because it opens more doors uh, for you. It's just another way that, you know, people contact you, but, uh, yeah, I would just make sure anybody that's getting those type of emails, do your research, look up the company, yeah. confirm yes. everything because there is definitely people that scam that way. Yes. Uh, but you know, I, it, you know, hundred percent. I mean, you gotta be careful, but also though, that there's people that you can build relationships with. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, <laughs> but it's, um, so and, and and, uh, here's oh, the other thing to consider too, is that, okay, you, let's just say you're more into cleats and clothing, but I'm more into phone stuff. You, you might come across a deal that you say, Hey, I got all these otter box cases and you could just forward it along to me. I could do the same for you. Or if there's something on the West coast that I can't deal with now, I'm going to know, Hey, my boy Wade could probably, that could be his first liquidation lot. So see that, God, that that's exactly. Um, and then also too, um, 
one thing that you guys could do is like look up the, I mean, there's ways you can look up companies, better business bureau, you know, I mean, you can look up the companies to see if they've got any strikes against them too, if you want to look into that, but check their, um, Facebook, check their Facebook page and see how much content they have, how many likes they have, or people responding to, Hey, I got a good, you know, if they have like four or five, that's probably not enough to really consider. Cause they, a couple buddies could do that. But you know, if they've had a hundred people like it and comment and you, you're probably dealing with a legit company. Oh yeah. Oh, somebody says viewing from Thailand. Nice. Um, the real stitch, Miss Frenchie. I had a great year because of great nuggets like this. Wow. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, thank you so much, Frenchie. Uh, she, she actually was on my YouTube channel and I interviewed her now before her, before she did it, she made an announcement from a cop car that she was going to be on the loudspeaker that she's going to be on my YouTube channel. So oh, I heard you, I heard you say that. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, oh, before I forget, so I, um, so get this. So I was at this uh, it, uh, uh, liquidation company that's right down the road from me, right? And I was talking with one, one, with one of the employees. He was getting a new job. It's this Greek guy that owns all six of them, right? Mm -hmm. And he told me something that was interesting. I was talking with him, and I was scanning stuff for Amazon. This was a few months ago. And he's, he was leaving the company, so you can tell he didn't care. He told me that they get their inventory free from target target offloads the stuff that they can't get rid of free to them. And I'm wondering how that was like, do they have a nonprofit, but how would that work? Cause they're selling it out of a brick and mortar. And he, 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 he wouldn't have told me that just to tell me that. Right. Yeah, no. uh, I know for a fact that my local supplier was getting some stuff from Best Buy for free and then selling it to me. Um, it's, it's a whole part of like the recycling. They have a contract. They have to follow certain parameters. Um, you have to be an author. There's a certain authorization you can get to be a, a legal like recycler. So if you have that, and you've gone through that process, then technically they could just give it to him for free and write off the full cost um, if they just need the space and need to liquidate it quicker. So that definitely does happen. Yeah, because the whole store, what they do, I think, is all the targets around here. Like, because some of the stuff is not expired, some of it is, but some of the stuff that's expired, you know, they can still sell. I mean, but. The majority of it's not, but they get it free from Target um, because they went through this process. And I mean, they're making a killing, right? It just, uh, yeah. and, and not only that, but they probably go there with their own truck off. I mean, there's really nothing that Target needs to do other than use it as a tax write off, right? Yeah, uh, I, I briefly, a few years ago, um, I looked into it. I remember like they wanted to come out and look at your operation for like a day. It was a week long class. Like the recycling game is big if you can get a setup for that because you can definitely get you know, inventory for free. Cause, and then, um, oh, 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 going back to, and other times they also charge them. So they might charge them for product to take, which is nuts. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, I like, so it was funny. Um, I was trying to negotiate a deal with him. So he called his Greek, the guy that owns it. He's Greek. I don't know why I'm, I keep saying that, you know, cause I love <laughs> the Greek people, but, um, he called the owner. The owner was like, yeah, I'll negotiate with them. That's when, if you guys remember back when I was uh, on Insta, I put that I bought all those, um, those strips, not the whitening ones, but the ones that help if you like your teeth hurt or something. I bought like, I don't know, four or 500 of those things. And um, anyway, so uh, yeah, he called, he gave me a better deal. And then, and then I was asking about another product and I was like, I know you guys probably get this for, you know, a couple bucks. And then he responded, no, we actually get this stuff for free. And started wow. chuckling, and I was like, "What? You're not you? You just dropped that on me!" And and anyway, so um, yeah, it was. And then at that point, you know me, I immediately went home and was like researching this thing like nobody's business, um, trying to figure out how can a big like they got six locations, but let's be honest, they're little hole in the wall locations. I mean, they're, they're big inside, but it's not like a you know a nice place, right? And I'm just wondering how like how they can get all this inventory from Target you know, a big box, you know, and I think it's regional based, you know, but yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, it was just really interesting. So I didn't know if you guys knew that in the audience, I figured I would let, Hey, yeah. and a lot of those smaller companies are drying up. So a lot of the corporations are going to one set standard. So there was a, you know, four years ago, there was a lot more opportunities than there are now when I was just getting into it, but I didn't know what I know now. So um, I've, through the through that period, I've probably had five or six local connections, and of which um, right now I have like three, but they're not even the same. <laughs> they're not the same guys. So, 
They it's come and go. The one thing we can count on is change. Yep. You know, um, what would you tell yourself? What would you tell your five years, like five years ago? What would you tell yourself that you could, if you can tell one or two things, what would it be? I uh, probably would tell myself then to document the process. Cause that'd be pretty amazing to be able to go back and like, see what I was talking about or doing. It's kind of hard to remember all that. And then, uh, Really, the other thing would just, you know, go hard, get some help and follow this dream of like having your own business and creating your own path. Um, going back to being frugal, one thing we're, we're big on is um, paying down the house. And um, the hope is to be completely debt free house and all in nine years. So that's our goal. And we're six years into that doing pretty well. All the cars are paid for. We don't have any credit card debt or anything like that. And then the business always has cash available for making bulk purchases so and then the other thing i'll say is like let's say you're making um a hundred thousand dollars a year and you're doing twenty twenty thousand dollars profit at that point so that's 20 percent margins that's pretty decent in the business world you should only be pulling out no more than 10 percent for yourself so you're only going to take ten thousand dollars out of that hundred because you want to make sure you not only have your cost of goods money come back in but another ten thousand dollars to add to that to continue to grow and you know, build, build more uh, inventory and find better sources. Oh man, the nuggets were flying tonight, guys. Nuggets were flying. Um, all I can say, guys, is if you are not subscribed to him, subscribe to him. I I think that I can echo that. Um, I I bought 50, 60, I don't know how many storage units, a ton of storage units, and um, I didn't document any of them. But you know, you know to to be honest though, I didn't really know, like I knew of YouTube, but I didn't, you didn't think about that. It was just hard to explain. Like you didn't think that way, you know, you were just doing, I was just doing business. I was just trying to work and you don't think about documenting. So if you guys are lucky and you catch this live and you just started maybe on eBay or Amazon, um, then yeah, grab a camera, even if you make it private or public, um, that way I'm always like that. I'm like, especially you, like you have four kids, like they're going to, they're going to grow up and they're going to see their dad with all that head of hair sitting behind yeah. that fish tank, crushing it. Right. The hair will probably be gone. And yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, <coughs> um, I, I'm blessed. You're blessed. It's really cool to have known you guys. Go subscribe to his channel. We always leave the show with words of wisdom. This can be reselling related, non reselling related, just something that, um, something positive that we can leave out in the community. What words of wisdom do you have? <clears throat> Clear my throat for this one. Um, if there's anything you could probably learn from me today is, um, you know, hearing some of the things that um, I do is it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to do it and keep moving forward. Like don't, don't be scared of that. It's gotta be the perfect, um, you know, shipping program or the perfect recording software, this or that you need to, Get your hands in it, get dirty, and just keep moving forward. Um, and learn, and then learn from your mistakes. And like now, I'm at a point where I'm learning from different people, and I can fine tune the business. But had I been too cautious about wanting it to be perfect, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I ditto that. I echo that. There's nothing better than actually using your hands and then learning that way. I mean, you can consume all the content in the world, but at the end of the day, until you put it to practice, is it? You know, that's also, gonna... that's also the only way you can teach help or, you know, teach other people on YouTube. You have to have that, um, you know, that experience of doing it. Yep. I, I've changed my process a lot. I've changed it a lot. All right, guys, sub subscribe to his channel. Hit the thumbs up button before you go. It's on the right hand side. It's a little thumbs up button right like this. And, um, you know, hit, yep. Hit the thumbs up button, at least for the fish. All right. Um, oh, the light's off. Oh, the lights off. The fish are going to bed, man. It's a lot. That's after eleven thirty here. What are you doing? Yeah, hey, you got a timer on that thing? <laughs> yeah, I got a timer. Um, so just pack, man. I know he's getting into liquidation. Um, he says thanks, liquidation pros and Wade. Look forward to the following your journey. Thanks for the super chat, my man. You didn't have to do that. Literally, that's, you're the best. Best admin in the biz. Best admin in the business. Best. Ad if you need an admin, by the way, yeah. you need to make sure he's an admin. All right, he's really good. Yeah. But, but now he's on like every single channel. I go I go on every single channel and he's admin now. He, I don't know how he finds time for me. But uh, You know what I'm thinking is uh, someone should create a calendar for all the resellers' live shows. 
like a, a way to go and see who's scheduled to be live at a certain time. Oh my gosh, that is a good idea. Cause um, like how would I know? Like I was thinking about doing like nine o'clock on Thursday, but I can't keep track of when everyone's planning to go live. Yes. You know I mean? Yes. That hey, uh, it's a simple thing. That's why you gotta. That's why you gotta create relationships. I mean, whether you're, man, you're states away. Does you drop in the bombs? Like you, YouTube should have that. Like the people yeah. you follow, they should be able to look on the calendar and see when they're scheduled to be live. I'm. I'm. That would be. That would be crazy cool. I, man, I didn't even think about that. Huh? If we have any developers watching it, hit us up, and me and Wade will, uh, me and yeah. Wade will launch it. We will make something happen. We'll make. That's what. That's what's awesome. Beyond be on social media, is you can. And that's another thing too. I forgot to mention is the fact that when you do, when you do get on social media, you meet cool people, and you can not only meet cool people, but you can recommend cool people. And that's what I like to do on my channel. I like to recommend people that are really good for people that are looking for really good people and whatever niche they want to sell in. So, um, all it right. Like, uh, it sounds like the land shark picker is a programmer. Nice. Nice. We, got, we already got some in the community. Yeah. I can't even like, man, I, I didn't even know how to hashtag a year ago. So <laughs> don't ask me. I, it, literally I'd have to send the picture to Ashley and then she, she would, she would post it for me. So I didn't even know how to wow. hashtag a year ago. Um, all right, guys, have an amazing night. Thank you so much for coming. Again, subscribe to his channel. It's going to be down below in the video in the description. Much love. We have our last live show next uh, tomorrow, guys. And um, really hoping you guys join. He is amazing. Um, he does Amazon full time. And, and then after that, we're going to take a, a couple day break because we've had shows every single day since Sunday. So anyways, guys, have an amazing day. Thank you so much for coming. Much love. And enjoy, enjoy, just enjoy 2019. Seriously, enjoy. All right, guys, see ya.